Welcome to Structures and Forces for Grade 7. This is the last presentation. We're going to talk a little bit about how structures fail. If a force is great enough and it is applied to a structure, it will begin to fail. Construction workers um, use levers to try to break apart buildings. A lever is a device that is used to change the amount of force needed to move an object. So construction workers will use crowbars to lift or move very heavy objects. Some levers consist of a long arm that rests on a pivot or a fulcrum. So here's an example of a crowbar. Materials fail because external forces cause internal forces in the structure. These forces can cause the following types of problems or damage. They can cause shear damage, where weight, the weight of building collapses because of shear forces or tearing forces on the building. Buildings can bend or buckle. Structures can bend or buckle. For instance, a tin can will bend or fold up when it is compressed. And with torsion, twisting can lead structures to break apart or become tangled. What are some good uses of forces? Materials that bend, snap, break, or shear can be put to good use in the following ways. If they buckle, they can be used in car bumpers and in the sheet metal used in cars to absorb a force during a collision. A car may become badly damaged, but the people inside may not be as badly injured because the metal and other materials crumple and absorb the energy of the collision. Shear is used in motorboats um, with the propeller. If a propeller, propeller gets tangled in the weeds, this pin called a shear pin breaks and stops the propeller from turning. This will save the engine. When you twist things like spinning cotton or wool fibers tightly together, you can make fabric or string. When you twist the string together, you can make ropes. When we're talking about structures and forces, we need to talk about things like metal fatigue. Metal fatigue is when metal weakens due to the stress that it has been placed on it. Uh, you can tell something is starting to get some metal fatigue because you can see cracks and breaks in the metal. We also need to talk about friction, which is a force that resists or works against the movement of two surfaces rubbing together. So when you rub your hands together really quick and it starts to heat up, that's friction. Friction holds things together like brick walls, so each layer of the brick rests on the layer below it. This friction holds bricks together. Frictional forces are greater between rough surfaces than they are between smooth surfaces. So there's more friction between two bricks than there are between two pieces of smooth ice. Di designers often rely on one of the following methods to help structures withstand forces. The first is to distribute the load throughout the structure so that no single part is carrying most of the load. They also direct the forces along angled components so that the forces push the pieces together instead of pulling them apart. Lastly, they try to shape the parts to withstand the specific type of force they are likely to experience. Structures can be strengthened by using materials that are appropriate for their function. So in a swing set, you want a rope or a chain that has a high tensile strength so that when the kids swing, those ropes and chains stay uh, solid and don't break. We need to also talk about stable structures. A stable structure is one that is not likely to fall or tip over. In order to do that, we need to know about center of gravity. That's the point at which the gravitational force of an object is acting. So that's where gravity is acting, probably where the most mass in the building is. It is important that home builders understand the properties of the ground that they're building on. If they do not, then the houses that they are building can be damaged by shifting soil. So how do you build on shifting ground? You find something solid, so builders sometimes try to dig down to bedrock, or they sink metal or concrete or wood cylinders in the ground until those rest on the bedrock directly. They try to make a solid layer so they'll compact the loose soil before building on it. 
road builders will compact the soil to create a solid base for the asphalt or concrete. They try to spread the load over a large area. So this is why footings underneath houses are wider than the walls that they are supporting. Sometimes structures or objects are designed to spin and sometimes the spinning part of that stabilizes the structure so we talk about spin stabilization which is the tendency of an object that is spinning on its axis to move in a predictable manner the faster a bicycle wheel spins the more stable it is so the faster you bike if you think about it if you start out biking and you're going really slowly, you're really tippy, but the faster you go, the more stable the bike is.